This is it, the final episode. Honestly, when I started this midnight gospel journey, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't know that this would be a lot more than just a cartoon, and that this series would lead me to reflect deeply on my life and myself as a person. I'm terrified to finish this. A lot of you have told me that something bad is gonna happen, but more than that, I'm just worried about having to face the next step. I feel like I've taken on more responsibility as a result, internal responsibility, does that make sense? And now I have to face it when it's over. I guess there's nothing else to do but watch it, right? May as well watch it. One last thing though, I wanna say thank you guys for following this Midnight Gospel journey so far. It's been a blast and I really enjoyed talking to you guys in the comments. Usually my reactions are just that, you know, they're my first reaction. And I don't always agree with everything I say, even 30 minutes later when I'm editing or whatever. Even when you guys disagree with me on a fundamental level, you guys have been very cool. So thank you for that. And uh, and yeah, let's, let's do it. I'm literally sweating. The fact that they're cute makes me suspicious. What? Hold on one, one sec. Okay. Mom? Oh. Hi, Mom. Hi, Duncan. Would you be in my big cast? Oh, it's actually Duncan's mom. That's so cool. What's it like having me as a son? <laughs> <laughs> Scary question. You proceeded to be born as quickly as you possibly could. I, got, I had to get out. Obviously, you did. You had things to do, things like Midnight Gospel. Do. Oh, yeah, see? One thing I really appreciate about this episode so far is they're doing such a great job using contrast to create a feeling. This environment, this background right now is so peaceful compared to the usual episodes where there's just so much going on. It, it feels so so nice. They've done that before in this show, like the meditation episode where they create space, like that guy says. Maybe it's my personality that I like focus on one thing. I don't right know. after I pee in the doctor's face, he cuts off the tip of my <laughs> cock. Is this that? episode about circumcision? circumcision? That was like no, two minutes. Not. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh yeah, he's gonna die in a swivel chair. But he's not in a swivel chair right now. Your brother walked into the room, saw me nursing you, and screamed that baby was eating mama up. And yes. he's probably traumatized about that ever since. Well, he probably is. This baby moved into his home. Speaking of holding on to trauma. How much do you think that kind of thing has an impact on a person's personality? Unbelievable amount. You subscribe to the idea that the formative years create the beginning of a pattern. The first five years Makes of sense. our lives shapes the personality structure. Any kind of spiritual work that you're gonna do later is going to involve looking back at the patterns that were set down in your family of origin. Think about it. I mean, anything that you were reinforced for in a positive way, you're gonna lock in. That makes a lot of sense. Those are the most important years for your survival or the most critical years for your survival. It's a little bit frustrating, you know, to think that your personality was so heavily formed before you even had cognition of yourself. As a child, you're kind of imprinted with certain beliefs and ideas and ways of being. And then you spend the rest of your lives for some people just trying to undo some of the things that have formed and it's like completely hidden to you. It's like your life's work to figure out the first couple years of your life. It's weird to think about it that way. You start with where you are, but if you don't go back and see what's real and what's not real, then you're missing your way into reality. It's that makes sense to me. Distinguishing what's real from what's not real. Right, going and back a little bit, kind of undoing it. things and that the you've teacher built up. needs to be devoted to truth. I like that too. In fact, I think that's one of the issues I've had with the show is that sometimes people are approaching truth when they now, speak, but then they kind the, of like deviate the, uh, and they go towards the something that's more about is, like making themselves feel better. I don't know. Truth people, should be the thing, I think. I, kind of like when you're going down a river and you don't know how to canoe and you end up stuck on the side of the river and a bunch of branches covered in <sighs> mosquitoes. They're just, the, the, the canoe, Almost everyone the rudder yeah. was messed up Seems and like they end up on the side common. of the river. That's probably the normal state. Or they try to pretend that the side of the river is where you need to be. I think I said that exact thing in the last episode. What do they do? What's some steps that they could take? to begin this process of coming to truth. The easiest thing for oh, that person aging. to do is to get present. Put the past aside, put the future aside, and sense into their bodies. Meditation Can you sense like... the inside of your hand right now? Hold on. Like under my skin? Yeah, like inside. Huh, what does it feel like? Kind it's of like, like the inside of my hand. It just feels like an energy, you know? Yeah, yeah, you're right. So see if you can sense your whole hand. I'm sure everyone who watched this is doing the same thing I'm doing right now, which is yeah. copying them, and right? And your legs, so that you can sense your arms and your legs at the same time from the inside. That is presence. That's weird. I've never done that before. That's weird. <laughs> That's presence. And what you're it doing is weird. Why is it weird? <laughs> Like a baby, what the heck? <sighs> Ew. And so, the next thing okay. you can do, <laughs> look at what? Whatever you see, just let it come to you. 
Don't sur search it out. It's a bee with a thousand eyes and horns. It's holding oh, a dagger covered in pentagrams. Oops, was I supposed to close my eyes? You know, I, you <laughs> I was looking at that tree. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It gives you a kind of clarity. A kind it of... gives you clarity and it takes you into a slightly different dimension of consciousness. Right. You will sense that there is a river. Because a lot of people on the side of the river don't even realize there's a river. What's the river? It's reality with its flowing dynamism. And it's constantly changing and and transforming all would've, the time. Who would have guessed that Duncan's mom ended up dropping the most knowledge? This is great. I love the way she talks about it. It feels more honest. It's very simple, but practical. And you can tell that her motivation behind it is good. Like she's approaching things honestly, if that makes sense. You can move back and forth between these dimensions of ordinary consciousness and something that is out of space and time. And that thing outside of space and time is, is more real than the mental constructs. That's it's your true identity. Just, all of that is just stuff that you've learned. I don't want to really say which one's more real. I think that they serve different purposes. I don't want to deny anything about who I am or what I am. I don't think carrying things that I've learned is necessarily bad. It depends on what those things are. I value the things that I've learned, some of them. It's about keeping the things I learned that I want to keep and letting go of the things I learned that I don't want anymore. I don't want to put a ranking or hierarchy on, on reality or usefulness of things in my life, who I am. Yeah. Because if you have been around tit suckers, <laughs> part bacon tit suckers. Because <laughs> the house is always going to get knocked down. That's part of life. The house get knocks, it gets knocked down. There's no way out of it. But yeah. if you will think about all the times that your houses have gotten knocked down in your life, yes, they are actually the transformative moments. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true too. But those moments are critical though, because it depends on how you process those things. You can definitely go the wrong way, as I think we talked about in yesterday's episode. That kind of brings us to the idea to something that you have been dealing with for four years now, which is that you have stage four bone cancer. Four years ago, you called uh, to tell us that you had six months to live. I have been told to call a crematorium and find out how much it would cost to be cremated because I had maybe a month or six weeks and that I needed to know Yikes. that so that I could pay the money up front. I may as well make peace with it. Right. It's easier to go with the flow of that particular river than it is to try to fight it. We're all going to die. If you look at the world, what you see is things appearing and disappearing. And humans are a part of the whole. Humans appear and they disappear. And we consider ourselves special cases. Yes. But we're really not. You're a special case. <laughs> it's because I'm your mama. <laughs> no, come on. There's no way to stop the heartbreak. How do you... What do you do about that? You cry. You cry. definitely something everyone's got to you know deal with yeah and, and and the encounter with truth which for me you dying you're dying this thing has been probably the greatest run in with truth that i've had in my whole life yeah it's crazy that this is real but it's not like it makes you feel this this is not a feeling of like this is not a desirable feeling no. Actually, his mom. But it's a feeling that every single human being will experience. So many of us are spending so much time engaged in just ridiculous activities, it seems like, just to try to avoid this experience. Exactly. People really try to avoid the consideration that they are going to die and that people they love are going to die. It opens your heart. It breaks your heart open. Yes. Opening your heart sucks. <laughs> This is hurts. the thing, like, you know, this is the thing Ram Dass talks about all the... It hurts. Yeah. Does it all... I was right to be scared of this episode. It's extra tough to watch because it's his actual mom. Does opening your heart always just hurt? Or are you just in a constant state of... No, it doesn't always hurt. You know what you're experiencing is love. I would tell them to cry when they need to cry. Way ahead of you. And, but I do think that we suffer more if we resist that flow of the river reality actually has this quality of benevolence yes right mm. and even That's benevolence so interesting. Oh, i love you very much obviously i love you too that kind of love it can go in anywhere 
I'm as certain of that as I am of anything. Well, let's cut to a commercial. Surround him! Oh, damn, come on. Oh. Oh. You have been Contrast so of bad. By Such a nice thing from that gospel merch coming soon. Oh man, come on, not the ice cream unicorn. What is going on? Is this like an anti authority plot line at the end here? Interesting. Dog. Get in. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> spoons, just like the music from the reincarnation episode. There he is again, Mr. Spoons. The spoons are the shoes. Make music while you walk. A lot to unpack in that metaphor. Am I dead? Just be here now. Wow. I have so much to say. Ah, uh, wow. I see what you guys are talking about. That episode was definitely the most impactful for a lot of reasons. One, because, God, Duncan Trussell's mother is just so amazing. The way she speaks about things and her perspective on things. To me, that was definitely the best guest. But obviously also the fact that he's talking to his real mother adds a touch, a transcendent touch that you just don't get in TV. I think that moment is what sets this show apart from anything else. It really uses the gifts it has to give something really powerful and just different. Another thought I had was that Death said he would die in a swivel chair, but he wasn't in his swivel chair when the cops came. He was in his knees, on his knees. So did he die? When was the last time he was in a swivel chair? Was he dead the whole time? Maybe there's no answer. And I guess it's not really the point. You know, it's not really the point. Is the cartoon character alive or dead? It's more about the concepts and the realization he comes to and the experience he has of his own life. And also probably they're keeping it open for season two. <laughs> Which I hope there is. I think this is a great show. I think it's so cool that they allow people to come on and talk about these themes on TV. I know it's Netflix, but you know what I mean. You don't get shows where you can have discussions like this. It sometimes it comes across as a weakness because they're forced to make a show around it when, you know, conversations don't always have a show structure. And so that's when I think sometimes the animation conflicts with it. But the themes covered are just so, so different. I'm really grateful that I had this experience to watch this. And I'm really grateful to all of you for coming along in this journey. I'm gonna reflect on this show a little bit and then I think I'm gonna do a follow-up when I had a chance to organize, collect myself, think about what it means and how I can maybe apply it to my own life, what I wanna do with these thoughts. So that's the end of our React series for Midnight Gospel. Thank you guys for watching and for encouraging me to keep going and for all your comments and feedback, criticism, compliments, all of it, very much appreciated. I feel like this was a very special journey. And I'm thankful that you guys came along for the ride. Take care and maybe I'll see you for season two. <laughs>